look like, you know, on a daily basis. So he goes through this whole thing about how he's modeling shrimp function and there's predatory blah, blah, blah. And, you know, my mind is going wherever. Well, he asked me, well, what do you do? So I said, we're, you know, what I do on a daily basis is kind of like play therapist. You know, I talk to a city. They tell me their problems. I give them advice. They take the advice, and they're better off for it. So I think that that's like in a can, you know, the, the best way to sort of explain, you know, what we do. So, um, again, these are sort of a list of some of the tools and some of the products that we, um, as a group, create. Stakeholders are involved throughout the process, you know, the entire time. I mean, that's kind of this little blurb down here. Um, and there's lots of different tools that we've developed um, and else in that are continuing to develop. Public participation is um, a kind of a subset of any design process that is continuing to grow and evolve. So right now we're using MindMixer. We also have community collaborate for virtual tools. Um, for the physical tools, we can do you know what you see, charrettes, workshops, small groups. We also do something called an urban intervention where we'll actually go into a community and build a little part of what they're looking for, which is kind of fun. Um, and then the virtual component, I mean, there's lots of different ways that we can do that. Um, and if you have a project that you think would benefit from public participation, please come talk to us because we can give you some ideas about um, uh, what tools will uh, work the best and be the most effective. Um, so implementation, the whole point of all of this is getting the thing built, right? So um, Aaron showed this little video of Riverdale, you know, the granary being demolished. I mean, this process has been going on for like 10 years. Yeah. I mean, that little building coming down gave so many people brain damage and heartache, it just didn't even make sense. They, so, they call it their beacon of light, yes. and it's gone now. It's yeah, horrible. So implementation, we want to set communities up to be able to do this right. You know, And so there's a recipe for success. I mean, you want the cake to taste good. You want your community to be happy. So there has to be a good helping of financial resources. This is where Matt comes in. You know, nobody can do anything without money, and communities are constantly looking for financial sources and incentives um, beyond, you know, Girl Scout cookies and bake sales. So we got it. We have to help them find, you know, realistic sources of funding um, to help them move their projects forward. And usually, we start by um, helping them prioritize catalyst projects, and that could be one project or a series of projects spaced out over a number of years, but it really builds momentum for the project. So we found that if a community can get one little thing done, like this granary, you know, it really starts the snowball moving of things they can do. Um, you know, and in Riverdale, for example, there's a lot of projects there. I mean, with a lot of communities that we work with, I and mean, you see how this 